Hello and welcome. We are back. S-D-H-O-4. It's been a little while, and for any of you who are finding your way to this video, um, I either have tutorials or I have my podcast. So this is my podcast, SDHO Sound Design Hangout. These are going to be a, a bit more talkative. <laughs> there might be a lot of talking. There might be a little bit of talking. There might be a lot of Ableton. There might be a little bit of Ableton. There'll probably be a lot more Ableton. <sighs> but um, yeah, and this is going to be a fun one. Now, I know I say stuff like that every time, but I really do mean it. I mean, I really love Ableton. I really love sound design. And today, I I wanted to play around with something that I don't really do. And this will be an opportunity for me to figure out where I stand on the topic for today's sound design hangout, which is risers. Do you know what a riser is? They're also called fallers, I guess, because it can either rise up or it can fall down. You get that a lot more in electronic music, a lot more like EDM type music. You know, everything is building up and everyone's like, oh, it's building up. And then you've got some weird sound that's like, whoa, 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 whoa. like something, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden that leads into like the drop or when everything's at a peak, there might be a faller that might signify everything breaking down. And when I was learning Ableton, which let's be serious, even though it's been not, even though I've been doing Ableton for nine years, we're all, I mean, I'm still learning, you know what I mean? We're all still learning. But I did a thing back in the day where I would sort of go from task to task to task. Typically, I would start with drums because drums were like important to me. And after I did drums, whether I used it to make like a good uh, song or something or not, I would then move on to like chords and then I'd maybe move on to melodies. Then maybe I'd move on to sound design with like operator. Then maybe I would move on to risers and then maybe I would work on my sampling technique and then I would work, you know, so I would like go to these different sections. And by the time I got through all of the different things that you would just do in Ableton, if you were like a student of the game, so to speak. And I'm still kind of like that, although I focus more on sound design now. Like I literally don't even care if I ever even like produce any new music because I'm literally just like farming ideas and just getting better. Um, and like, Typically, a piece of music will just write itself anyway. Um, but I noticed, because I was thinking about it, you know, if you ask questions, you get answers. And I was thinking about it, and I was like, okay, <clears throat> I'm very happy about what I've achieved so far with these Ableton Live tutorials. Because initially, I just said, you know what, whether anyone sees this stuff or not, I feel like I need to do something and what I need to do is I need to cover sound design, everything that I've been learning over the last nine years and I need to relate it back to Ableton devices because you definitely don't need any plugins. I know there'll be people thinking, no plugins? You mean you don't even have Camel Fat Fat Filter? How could you? You mean you don't have Serum? Uh, uh, why could life be so bad that you would not have Serum? You know, and I'm just like, here's the thing. And this is what I was like in the, and yeah, I know I'm jumping around from topic to topic, but let's face it, it's a podcast. So if you're not enjoying this, just watch a different video. Don't watch the sound design hangouts. But this is here for the people that want to hang out because I got a lot of things to say. I'm not just making these, these videos because I've got a lot of spare time, although I do. <laughs> No, that's not true. I spend all my time doing things that I love and things that better me um, as an individual, and uh, Ableton is one of them. So, um, 
where was I going with all of that? Well, I'm very excited to, so, okay. <laughs> Cheers. We're hanging out. There may be some beer involved. <laughs> but don't do anything I do because you like my tutorials and you like me. Make your own decisions. I'm not a guidance counselor or anything. I'm the person you come to when you want to hear good tutorials, someone who's genuinely excited, and this is just who I am. I want to do an SDHO because I'm very happy. I accomplished what I wanted to do which was essentially go through all of these instruments and make tutorials on all of them, or at least the ones you would want to know about. And I knew no matter what, we were going to cover the big boys, the heavy hitters, analog, operator, sampler, oh, wavetable. Wavetable is so nice. Collision, tension, and electric, which, by the way, I don't think anyone uses those devices. Um, if so, put it in the comments, prove me wrong. And I want to thank you guys because I've gotten so much better at Ableton in this last month and a half because I had to make good videos for you. So thank you. Thank you because I hope that I made you guys better at Ableton. But you, yes you, made me better at Ableton. I'm telling you, if I didn't make these tutorials, I wouldn't have opened up Collision or Tension or Electric or Simpler. I wouldn't be working on risers right now, which that's a good segue. Let's get into risers. So I think you know what risers are, but here is why this SDHO, and by the way, I'm going to make a formal tutorial on risers. you know, all of these beautiful sound design things, I was like, well, what, what kind of tutorials am I going to do next? And I was like, risers. Because, like, that's a whole completely different kind of thing you would do in Ableton that I haven't done yet. And it's like, it's, it's using very... So, like, you automate parameters. You might map them to the same macro knob. Um, you will automate a parameter, maybe an LFO that's real low, like whoa, 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 whoa. And then as you add the radio, it whoa, 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 you know, and like maybe you have the, the filter really low and it's like, you know, you, and then all of these things jack up. So it's like a lot of automation. It's using macros and not just using macros, but like if you know you want a parameter to be going up, automated up, and you got five other parameters you want to go up, you can map them to the same macro knob, which even though we went over instrument racks in that one video, which is a pretty good video because it shows you like instrument racks. So you can have like five analogs, five operators, three collisions, all in the same thing. And each time you push a note, it plays it through all of those devices. So you can basically be playing like 15 stacked synthesizers at the same time, which is why I was like really excited to make that one. But um, yeah, risers. So here's what's really interesting about uh, today's SDHO. You want to know the last time I did anything, last time I made a riser sound? Could have been like two years ago. I don't like just randomly make sounds like that. That's like stuff you would make in like EDM and stuff. And I'm like an ambient uh, music producer, you know? Although I really wouldn't even say ambient. Like I literally, if you listen to all my music, and I've probably made like four to 500 different pieces of music over the last like two years. It's all very different, you know? Um, but I haven't really had any reason to work with risers and I realized that would be a really good avenue to explore. So let's get into risers, shall we? Okie dokie. Right click. It's really weird. Sometimes you right click and it doesn't register. Maybe that's just my laptop. Insert an audio track. I'm going to push command option I to hide the uh, input output panel. And I'm going to go and drop an operator on here. We have a sine wave. 
and it's not playing. Record enable. Hit some notes. I'm going to lower the master volume here. And I want to do something very basic. So I'm going to stick with a sine wave for now. I'm going to double click to get a MIDI clip. And I'm going to put a B note in here. And I'm going to, with it selected, I'm going to do shift and down arrow. And I'm going to click legato. And I'm going to click play. We've got one bar. I'm going to duplicate it to four bars. And now we've got four of these notes, but I don't want four of these notes. I just want one long one. So I'm going to highlight this note and click legato. So we've got this B note, and this is what it sounds like again. Now, I'm going to come over here to LFO, and I'm going to click it. Now, I'm going to play a note. Actually, I'm going to click play. I'm going to lower the frequency. And the LFO isn't doing anything. OK, I lied. It is doing something. Um, so I want it to like go low and then go high, like that. I'm going to click Stop. So one of the ways to do it is you want your LFO to like low rate. You know what I mean? Let's click on operator and push command G. Hit this button. And let's map the rate. Right click on the rate and map it to macro one. And click this map button and move the minimum amount up. Let's move it to 90. I'm gonna click off here. So now I'm gonna play a button. Actually, I'm gonna add a MIDI effect pitch. I'm gonna click it down because I wanna play this. I chose 90 because anything below 90 was just too low anyway. Now I'm going to right click on a mount and I'm going to map to LFO rate, which basically just means map to LFO one, or excuse me, map to this area. And I'm going to click map so I can see this. Now, I'm going to add, move this up to like 47%. Got it. You like that? I'm going to come into oscillator A, and I'm going to make it a triangle wave. Triangle waves never get used. This is what a triangle wave looks like. Notice how every other is getting skipped. See? And each one, see how it's going lower, 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 lower? If we do a square, it skips every other as well. Let's do triangle. What else might we do? Let's map frequency. Right click on frequency, map to macro one. Click the map button. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm going to make it start around 300. Five hundred. Okay. That's a good start. So let's play with some automation. Let's um, push shift tab to go back into here. I'm gonna right click. By the way, I'm gonna right click and give it a color because <laughs> you can do that. And I'm going to shift tab again and see how it says instrument rack macro one. I am going to uh, go into here. See how it says zero? And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to raise it up. So now we're going to have automation. So we have this. So you can see it down here with this macro. So you, um, and not only, well, I was playing a MIDI clip, so if I play, like, just another note, you know, you can kind of, you can, like, play it manually. So, like, what else might you do? Well, we're an operator, so why don't we take this level and map it to macro one, and then... Listen to this. Now let's click play. Pretty interesting, right? That's basically it, you know. It's, um, you know, it's pretty much just automating parameters that would sound good when they get turned up. LFO, right? Um, you got the LFO rate, you got the LFO amount. That makes sense. The filter, you go from low filter all the way up. That would make sense. Um, because we're doing FM synthesis <laughs> with this oscillator B and operator, you know, you turn the, uh, the that FM modulator, you know what I mean? So, like, you could literally just keep doing that. Um, let's go into audio effects. Let's drop a delay. I'm going to turn it off sync. Lower this a little bit. I'm going to map it to macro one, the feedback, and map the dry wet as well. <laughs> now listen to this. I got an idea, because I want to hear it ring. Let's um, go into here. Uh, this is like the automation view. Let's click over here to the clip view. And uh, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm just going to like get rid of this. And I'm going to, I don't know, extend it out a little bit. And now listen. And listen to the trail. I want there to be like a nice, interesting trail off. I actually don't want it to do that, but that's okay. I don't want that. 
So Okay, now listen. I wanted to like just keep playing and I want this big trail to happen. Take a listen. Ouch. Maybe that might maybe that might fix that. Okay. I mean, what else would you do, right? Uh, reverb. Set a reverb. Decay time. Macro one. Dry wet. Macro one. Dude, look at all this stuff we have. <laughs> look at all this. So now let's see what this sounds. Well, first of all, I'm going to play it just normal. <laughs> That's so cool, right? So there's nothing stopping us from going into audio effects, going to, um, by the way, when I was doing that, I was just holding down a note. Um, I wasn't actually launching the clip. Um, go to modulators, throw an LFO, map it to this. <laughs> Lower the depth. Put up the jitter. I mean, like, now we're just, like, playing it like a, a weird synthesizer. Delete. Okay. Let's, let's launch the clip. I just got a good idea. I think you guys know what I'm about to do. That was my dog snoring. He's a pug, so he's like a big snorer. They really do snore. Insert audio track. Click the I.O. button. If you don't see it, scroll down a little bit. Audio from instrument rack. I heard a piece of music in there that I was like, that would sound really good if I do some manipulations. So let's do this. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Ooh, hear that high-pitched howl? I didn't hear that the first time. Okay. So here we have it. Let's click times two. By the way, um, make sure you're on repitch. Let's click times two. Sorry, I think I stopped the recording, but luckily I didn't, although I have done that. Let's click play. Hear that bass? We're just time stretching it.
Um, so we're in this audio track right now. Let's uh, let's go to EQ. Trap an auto filter. Bring the auto filter down. And let's do this. Play. Uh-oh, look at the auto filter. Let's give a little resonance. <laughs> That's just me doing that. Well, oh well. I'm going to play that original guy again. Lower the pitch. Just playing different notes. So I think that's about it, guys. Um... Hopefully that wasn't anticlimactic for you, and hopefully this will get released because I accidentally stopped the recording halfway through, um, but I think I'm going to be able to figure it out. So if you got to see this, uh, hopefully um, it was meant to be, and that, that little error didn't screw everything up. Um This was fun because I feel like for these podcasts, we should have somewhat of a topic um, and then, you know, we talk, we hang out and we do it. Um, dude, I haven't done a riser sound for, like, I don't, you know, the music I make, like, I don't need, like, I don't need crazy whoopy whoop whoops that then go like just that, like you could just. Like, look at this. This is just like the tail. Mute. I have muted you, instrument rack. Muted you. Okay. Let's click play on this. And we're in repitch. Ouch. Let's play it again. Let's go in here. Wow, that is a loud one. So there's a lot of things you can do. Um, I'm just going to stop it there because I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm losing my attention span. I want to go work on some 3D art. Um, if you would like to... I, not even if you would like to. Um, hold on. So, I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be making a lot of Blender tutorials. Blender is an open source 3D computer graphics application that is free. I shouldn't have even said 3D computer graphics because you can do 2D computer graphics as well in Blender. It is on par, if not better, than Maya, 3DS Max, Cinema 4D, Houdini. Do any of you guys know about 3D computer graphics art applications? You don't need any money. Skip Blender, and I will, like, teach you the rest. So, I think, you know, I am going to post them on this channel, as I do have other Blender tutorials on there. They're more, like, advanced tutorials. I'm going to do beginner tutorials. And like what you're seeing is what I do every day. Whether it's Ableton, whether it's Blender, 
whether it's making videos, you know, whether I'm talking about crypto, um, it's basically like me sharing and teaching the things I love and care about. So this isn't like a music own music production only to tour a uh, YouTube channel. This is me. This is what I do. I'm a big talker. This is how I talk all the time. I don't talk to many people. I'm mostly just alone by myself, and that's not a bad thing. I love my solitude. Don't worry. Um, but. Uh, I've been wanting to talk to people about these things for like forever and I haven't really had anyone to talk to about this stuff. And now the universe is like, go on, talk to them. <laughs> so uh, if you like this at all, please like, comment, and subscribe. I had fun. Hopefully this works. Um, meaning, meaning I accidentally clicked the space bar, which stops the recording <laughs> in my Ableton. So hopefully I'll I'll uh, I'll have no issues and this will go out but I um, hope you enjoyed hanging out for a little bit and I had fun hanging out and you guys take care